What's up, everybody? Welcome to History Hyenas. I'm Chris Stefano, a.k.a. Chrissy Crossovers. With me, Dan Soda. It's the stuntman, baby. Giannis Papas is stuntman. Yeah, Giannis is Papas is stuntman, a.k.a. Thunder Dan, a.k.a. Indian Dan. Yeah. A.k.a. Danny Nightscock. Oh, I saw- dude. Thanks for the thanks for the compliment, buddy. You really yeah. put me over. I dude, I Jeremiah Watkins, the great Jeremiah Watkins, who awesome. from, the, who from yeah. the back looks like a lady. <laughs> um, he uh, he's good good lady friend of mine. He uh, of ours. He sent me a video of I. So what was it? All fa- all people were. So he does the thing where people ask where he's like what what. Uh, Jeremiah wonders his podcast. He asks people what impressions they want you to do. If you do voices, and he asks like questions that you might have. Right. <laughs> Whoa! Reason, sorry, vid. I'm throwing the vid out. Um, <laughs> By the way, Giannis isn't here because he is having a baby any day now. His wife's having a baby any day now, and he needs to quarantine uh, because if he gets if he gets the vid, the vid from anybody, then he can't be there for the birth of his daughter. Yeah, he needs to be there to witness the birth of a Greek princess. He needs to be there, and he also he needs to be there to get shit on his shoe because that's what's going to happen in a live birth. Yeah, yeah, is baby. That, is that it? Did you center field the birth? Is that why you got shit on it? I well, what happened with me with with my daughter was first of all, the <coughs> nurse said, "Do not wear good shoes." To the, I was wearing like clean at the time, clean Air Force Ones, all white, yeah. and she was like, "Honey." Your, you know, wife's water broke. She's like, you're going to need to uh, go home and get a pair of sneakers. Or if you want, we could put you in um, some uh, Crocs. She was like, because those are going to get a little dirty. I was like, what? What do you mean? She was like, you'll see. Yeah, and then, yeah. It's she was showing up in slicks and in, in fucking full fishing gear. <laughs> big old rain slicks. Dude, the nurse told me. I swear. The room that we were in, the nurse, like, they sanitized. It was all, like, great. The woman before... The woman, like, I guess hours before that gave birth in that room, not only was gave birth, but also had a stomach virus, so was spewing diarrhea. Damn. And the baby, so the kid just came out, just caked in diarrhea, like, oh, yeah, dude. Like pulling a shirt out of a washer that's going. So what happened with us? So, like, oh. <laughs> so some babies, some babies, uh, they grow nails inside the womb. Like, yeah. they just grow fingernails. <laughs> so, so the baby comes out. My daughter comes, <laughs> yeah. So my daughter comes out, we're like, we see a head. And I'm like, oh my God, this is so awesome. And they're like, don't look down. Don't you dare look down. I'm like, I won't look down. And then I'm just waiting for like piles of shit to fall on my shoes and nothing. And the baby's out. The baby's like all, all coming out. And I'm like, well, no shit. And then all of a sudden I feel, I hear like, feel like fluid on my foot. And I look down and it's blood at the, at the end when the baby was being pulled out, she fucking nicked. She just snicked oh. her mom's boot on on the way. I was like, fuck you, mom. Oh, and then just bang. And then they were like, they, dude, then they started stitching up my girl with no anesthesia. I was like, what is going on? Like They're a like, civil war fighter? Like, that's what I said. Just, I was like, can we give her some morphine or something? Do you want somebody to come and read a prayer? Like, should we give her some wood to bite down? Yeah. I'm like, bite down to your teeth snap. Yeah, she's like, <laughs> yeah. we're doing some frontier medicine. Yeah. And she's like, yeah. yeah. Dude, it's crazy. That's the ultimate slamming the door when you leave your mom. <laughs> yeah, just, it's just nicking the fucking side. Nicking, I know. You're like, fuck you, fuck you, mom. And you're like, ah, ow, ow. No, but the her her the the womb with the JJ is so numb from the pain of childbirth oh. that they can just stitch without any anesthesia. She she didn't feel a thing. Yeah, she's like a prize fighter. When you know when you <laughs> yeah. see them, when they're like talking to the doctors, and they're just like, "No, I'm cool." Yeah. And she's like, "Dude, your head's the size of a fucking grapefruit." Yeah, I know. And then it's funny because like it was the most beautiful. My daughter was born ten o four in the morning. Beautiful. Twelve fifteen p.m. My girl's like, "You got to leave." Like, I don't want to like you know like you're fu-. they get like mad at you because they're like, "You put me through this." Like, just get away. Our baby's in the you know uh, baby's in the what do you call it the um the ward the baby ward yeah. she's just like resting so i went and did a table read for a show on ifc you did it benders was, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah. yeah i did the benders ta- first table read i literally came into the table read with still like placenta on my shirt and steve sharippa who was like bobby bacala from the sopranos yeah yeah he was like i you know because i was late for the table read and jim serpico who was the creator and director of the show and tom saletti were like oh chris is just coming from he had his first child two hours ago, goes, and Steve was like, really, you had your first kid? I was like, yeah, he goes, hold on. And he goes to his car, and he comes back with a bottle of his sauce. He's like, from my family to yours. Dude. Congrats on the new baby. And there's a bottle of Pomodoro, Steve Sharippa Pomodoro sauce. Dude, Italians <laughs> Italians love eating so much that yeah. they're just like, you had a kid? Here we go. We eat now. Yeah. Some sauce. Oh, family. Dude, they like, if you, if you could do like themes for cultures to jerk off, like <laughs> yeah. Irish people would be like, 
it would be like Irish Americans would be like about Ireland. Right. If you're like just the rolling green hills of Dublin, and they're like, <laughs> yeah, uh, oh County. my god, oh god, my grandfather's from Co- Cook, oh <laughs> god, from Cork County, oh fuck. And then like <laughs> Italians, it's like, yo, dude, a good sauce and family, people around you, yeah. and you're like, oh fuck, uh, I love my family. Yeah. Oh god, there's nothing more important than loyalty. Loyalty. Oh. Greece is all about fucking the history of their people. Yeah, and they're democracy. like, we were once the greatest, and they're like, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> oh fuck yeah. And then Canadians are like, no thanks, I'll go home. <laughs> I'll go home and do that there. But that's kind of, that's, that's a lot. That's kind of thing. That's a lot. You're doing a lot there, bud. Because we're fucking speaking in Canada Ed, because I feel like they probably, it's interesting because Canada is like, you know, you think they're like clean cut and like, oh, I'm sorry. And that's true. But I also feel like they're the kind of people that they would, instead of calling it Indigenous People's Day, they will also want to call it Columbus Day. What do you think? Oh, Canadians? Yeah. I would think that there'd be even like a goofier explorer that we didn't know about <laughs> that like Canada reveres. <laughs> or they're like, oh, this is Jacques Pistard Day. And you're like, I don't know who that is. And he's like, he discovered Newfoundland in 1505. And you're like, yeah, 1492, Columbus. Like, Oh, yeah. no, bud. I, I guarantee there's like a Canadian explorer right. that they love that we don't that know. That they love that we don't even But Columbus Tim is, Horton. Columbus has like, Columbus is like the Beatles of exploring. Right. Like, they're just the ones you know. Or right. If you're like, what was the, what's the biggest rock band of all time? You'd be like, oh, the Beatles. That's just what Columbus is. Like right. people, they teach them to everybody. So everyone's like, oh, it's Columbus. Like, I literally thought Columbus sailed here. Yeah. Saw it. Went back and was like, hey, this is the whole land. And everyone's like, cool. Cool. Yeah. America. The way they teach you in school, there's there's never any violence. There's never any fucking no. torture or rape or they, slavery. Yeah, They're they, just kind of like, so Columbus sailed here with three ships, the Pinta. <laughs> the, the Nina and the Santa and, Maria. And everyone's like, I know all of them. And they're like, then you know history. Yeah, I'm like, I, I'm like, I had an Aunt Nina. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, <laughs> right, Santa Maria. And everyone's like, yay. yay. And then if you get 1492, they're like, that's it. You get an A in history. Yeah. And then, like, and then as you start to go on, like, as, like, you know, time goes on, you're like, oh, wait, there was some evil shit that happened. Like, you know, I remember I, like, took a class and, uh, like, a college professor just casually threw it in. He was like, yeah, Columbus is one of the first people to experiment with biological warfare. And I was like, huh? Yeah. He was like, yeah, he gave blankets filled with smallpox to Native Americans. And you're like, I was like, oh, what? Sister Almary never told us that. Ooh, what about the ocean blue in 1492? Yeah. I'm yeah. like, wait, so he killed every, I'm like, but they had vaccines, right? He's like, no, they killed half the population, but oh. that's what we had to do for our country. I was like, oh. Or for me, it's falling asleep at 33 to an episode of ancient aliens smoking a joint and then waking up and they were like, Columbus raped most of the women. And you're like, <laughs> what's up? You're like, wait, yeah. like, what's going on? Because you realize that he... Yeah, he basically brought the Spaniards to be like, "Yo, grab some people. What That's are we it. doing?" Because that that was like big business back then. And then, um, you know, but it's interesting because like in certain neighborhoods, like here we're in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and this is like a pretty conservative neighborhood. I remember I have a friend, my big big Ryan. He's a cop, lives in Bay Ridge, and I remember like a couple of years ago when they were changing one. Well, I guess they have now legally changed it to Indigenous Peoples Day, right? So it's they- like it's not called Columbus Day, or it still is. They say uh, they celebrate both. They sell, but but in like another city, it's just indigenous peoples, or it's um, just Columbus. Certain states and certain cities just um, recognize it as Columbus Day, and other cities and states recognize it. it as both. And some people just do indigenous peoples. Day. Got it. it. That's so funny. It's like sexuality in this country, <laughs> where there's there's still the, you know like cities that are like man and woman sanctity of marriage, and then there's some people who are like. Listen, if you're bi, that's just what you are. If you want to be Columbus, if you want to be indigenous. And there's other people that are like, honey, we're coming hot gay sex right here. <laughs> yeah. It's indigenous people's day. Like That's what it is. Because there's what's the, the thing about Americans that uh, ultimately is a weakness for us is we latch on to narratives. And anyone that tries to change that narrative, we're immediately like, you're attacking everything everything i love right where it's like nah not really we're just trying to clarify some certain specific yeah. things yeah i think like the problem is with like looking back in history like things with columbus is like you're gonna find everybody was and in, in today's standards a piece of shit back then Yo, everybody dude, was doing what he was doing these fucking the dudes were wearing these hot wigs yeah just sailing selling people into slavery yeah and just fucking raping and pillaging yeah because a look at how quick 
the world changes. And like I, I, I remember like the movie Waiting just yeah. came out on Netflix, and I've seen Waiting a bunch of times, but it just came out on Netflix. You know, with uh, with uh, Ryan Reynolds, Justin, Justin Long. Long. Yeah, it's a great, great cast. movie, Louis Guzman. But then the whole premise of the movie is if you get stuck, if you get caught with uh, looking at another employee's dick, they play a game looking at another guy's dick, they kick you in the ass for being a. <laughs> And yeah. it's like, that was a number one comedy movie just 10, 15 years ago. And now, if you came to that premise, you'd get canceled just for trying to pitch that. Dude, if you tried doing that at an Applebee's now, no, that, they'd that, be like, you're out. You're out, dude. We, we can't have you at the Bees. We can't have you out. So imagine in 1492, hundreds of years ago, the things that they were doing, which were, they didn't realize that they were doing hard. I mean, they probably did, but it was just like, Business was business back then. Yeah, dude, we're... And that's what it is. So it's like, if you want to go back and cancel everybody, it's like, guess what? It wasn't just old white explorers that were doing bad shit. Everybody, every human being was living a different life. Well, that's also something where, uh, you know, before when I've been on the show, we were talking about uh, the heart of everything that is, about Red Cloud wow. in, the, in the Western Sioux. Oh, well, that's when Indian Oh, that's the name of the book. The name of the book is The Heart of Everything That Is. I wasn't getting f- super meta. I was uh, like, holy smokes. The Heart of Everything That Is is a great book about this. Uh, Sue from the Lakota Nation, this chief uh, Red Cloud. And something that I love about those books is that they're like, hey, listen, Native Americans did fucked up shit. Right. Like they would gang rape. They would smash babies into yep. rocks and yes. shit. But it's like, because everybody was a piece of shit yes. at that time. Yes. Everybody was. Everyone was doing fucked up shit. And then, like even the farmers where you're like, well, what are the farmers? They're fucking cheap. They're yeah. doing something. Yeah. They're doing something where you're like, this is crazy you're doing It's this. like you can't deny like things like slavery and beating your wife and all that all these things are bad things but guess what african american africans were selling other africans into slavery it's just it's either somebody else does it or you do it to your own that's just how the human brain works and like gandhi had fucking 12 year old wives it's like Yo, just cancel man. everybody then I'm, I'm trying to tell you when anyone when anyone tries to tell me like if i was all like yo i loved sincerely louis ck like i love that new special and people are like you watch that i'm like yeah do you listen to the beatles Cool. John Lennon beat the shit out of his wife. Yeah. Like, are, are we going to play this game? Yeah. You're. A, I don't believe in domestic violence. I think Louis did a fucked up thing, but I think you're worse. Yeah. You're supporting a monster. A monster. But it's like you're gonna you're gonna be able to fucking cancel everybody. everybody, dude. It's like, what do you want me to tell you? It, that that's why I'm like, I go by the person. I don't care about the race, religion, creed. It's like. People make mistakes. Not everybody's all... If anybody appears to be 100% perfect, stay away from them. Man. Do not go near the people who appear to be perfect because they're sinister scumbags. One of the biggest life lessons you can have <laughs> is never never trust a man that doesn't have a shadow. Yeah. I never trust someone that's not like, I did this fucked up shit because then you're like, what do you... And then you find out that they have um, children bones buried in their backyard. Yeah, dude. Because it's like even Elvis was a pedophile. What? Elvis married Ooh. Elvis married Priscilla when he was 24 and she was 14. Wow. Look that shit up. That there you is go. that is on record. And so I love to see all these people that are like, I got a Graceland every year. And you're like, cool. He was fucking kids in that house. Yeah. You know? Yes. It, it, they wouldn't call it Epstein Land. And you're <laughs> yeah. like, whoa. It's just like he also stole black music. Yeah. Like the guy fucking yeah. took black music and everyone's like, this is how you do it. Is, I know, dude, people, people. There it is. It. There's him with his child bride. Yeah. Uh-huh. You ever have a, a wife that's afraid of the dark? Uh-huh. He just has to do stuff. <laughs> well, come on, baby. Here's your juice box. Come on, Priscilla. Was she 14 or am I wrong? What she was. So that does She does not out. look 14. Yeah, they grew him different back then. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so it's, it's like because you were dying in war when you were seventeen. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, but that's the thing. Like times just change, and now times are changing so quick, and we have to adapt to things so quick that something you did last week was legal, and now you do it. It's like if you you could get canceled, you can lose your whole career, your fucking I've, freedom because I've, of it. It's scary. I've, I've said this before, but just to to wrap up like the whole canceling thing, especially being a comedian that we are like where we're just trying to be funny all the time and we're not necessarily thinking about how this could look retroactively. But I think um, you got to look at it as a comedian. It's like we're smokers and you might get cancer. Cancer is getting canceled. It's It's like sometimes you can fight it. Sometimes it kills you, you know, but it's like we're out here ripping butts. And yeah. it's like something, one of us, we're all, we all might catch it. Who yeah. fucking knows? My Aunt Colleen's listening to this episode like, I like that dance. Oh, yeah. God. I'm I a, really do. This guy gets it. He's, but, he's, honey, get me another new plot. Like you were saying with waiting, like you could play, they were playing the <laughs> game. Right. And then now it's like, Ryan Reynolds, they could bring that up to Ryan Reynolds and he would have to be like, 
gin off the, you know, yeah. gin company off the, you know, like, that was a different time. Yeah, I apologize like, to the community. It's all like, fu- fucking stop. Yeah, dude. That's why bringing up old tweets, it's like, yeah. I would hope there's no different people. Yeah, yeah. I like, um, I think, and it's like, I forgot, I forgot who this celebrity was, but I know she was Jewish. I'm forgetting who it was. But I remember she made some Instagram video, and I could tell she made some what car type of car she was in. She made some Instagram video, and she was talking about never go to Chick Fil A. That she's canceling Chick Fil A because of their political views or something like that. She's like, I used to love this sandwich. She like threw the sandwich outside of the window, and she's like, I won't eat this. I won't support this. It doesn't line up with my beliefs. And as she, and she's Jewish, and she threw the Chick Fil A out of her BMW, which was the car that the na- sponsored the Nazis for their fucking trucks going back and forth to the, to the you know. Also, didn't they make con- plane engines? It's like, who, who do you want to cancel? Because it's like, yeah, Hugo Boss made the Nazi uniforms. The honest and I always say, like, absolutely, the United States and the Allied powers won World War II fair and square, but the Germans won the cute competition. Oh. Was their uniform? Because that's the thing. If you're going to march into my town with a Hugo Boss uniform and fry boots, Ooh. honey, put oh, me in that camp. With a Mercedes down. Benz? <laughs> yes. Yeah. You're driving in a Mercedes Benz with a Hugo Boss suit and fry boots. Yeah. It's like, bitch, yes. Yeah, yeah. What do you want me to do, hit, hit, hitty? Yeah. Little Adolf, They're girl. Going, look at the se- look at the seam wear. Look yeah. at this. Look how fitted they are. Yeah. But it's interesting how it's like... I was wondering if you maybe wanted to get on this train with me. And they're like, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm Polish. I can be I can be confused yeah. easily. Yeah, he's like, what is your name? I'm like, what do you want it to be? Oh, wow. You know what I love? It's just like springs. Yeah. Spring, how about, spring in Germany. You've never been there? <laughs> how about instead of a name, we give you a number? Everyone knows that the Nazis are, the, Nazis are the ultimate fuckboys. <laughs> They just like invite you over and then they gas you. They don't gaslight you. They like actually gas you. Way Jong Jan. Yeah, dude, they're all fucking coming in all tie and tight. And just they're little, you know, the, the way they marched where they yeah. had their little sassy just shoulders. <laughs> yeah. Way Jong Jan. So it's like it's it's just interesting how it's like Hugo Boss suits and BMWs and Mercedes Benz and Vol and all those things the Nazis use. It's like they we don't cancel them, but let's cancel other bullshit. For no fucking reason. It's just like whatever the cancel police decide is important today. That's what it is. That's why it's all bullshit. It's yeah, all, yeah. But even today, it's like pe- not everyone is 100% good. That's just what the theme of it. That's why. I don't ever want to know anyone that's like, I'm perfect. I'm the best person in the world. No. And it's like, where does, all the, where does all the toxins go? Yeah. Where does it go? I know. It's like, did you see? Did you, <laughs> didn't Trump say yesterday that he was like, nobody's beaten COVID, like he's beaten it. The doctor said they couldn't believe how great his body was at beating COVID. That's so fun. It's, 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 it's so insane now that it's almost now he's almost doing that thing. And th- this is controversial, I'm about to say, but, and I know that a lot of people can be like, fuck you, no. But to me, I'm just talking about my personal feelings. I'm not saying I'm voting for him, I'm not taking a political stand at all. I'm just saying because of his level of insanity, and how much, how many times he said things like, "My no one's ever seen anybody be COVID like me." He's becoming likable to me because it's so crazy that I'm almost like I fucking actually like this guy now because he's out of his mind. Yeah, it's the you same. You know what I'm way, saying? Yeah, like I had a I had a, a thing where uh, when I get off the elevator in my building with my dog, if yeah. she has pooped and peed before the walk, and we've done the full cycle, if, yeah. she, if she hits for the cycle, yeah. Then I unclip her on the elevator, and I'm like, you can run, because we live at the end of the hall. I'm like, you, you, go ahead. Have yeah. fun. Yeah. And last night I did it, and she like did her little trot, and I was like, oh, cute. And then she just started fucking wigging out and just like running all the way down the hall yeah. and all the way back. And at first I was like, no, stop. Myrtle, stop it. And she's like running around. And then I started laughing, because I was like, yo, you're insane. Yeah. She'd like look at me, and they're like, <laughs> and yeah. stare down the hallway and you're like, what are you doing? She's stopping at it, like, give me a weird <laughs> yeah. face. And that's how I feel with Trump sometimes. I'm like, you're making me laugh because it's so frustratingly insane. It's so crazy. But the fact that he's like, I just, I, I kicked the shit out of COVID. Yeah. And they show a video where he's like, <laughs> and you're like, Dad, I don't think you did. Yeah. I don't think you did. It's, he's the ultimate guy of like, dude, I fucked, I fucked her so good. And then you talk to her and she's like, yeah, you like came 
And then it was weird. He like sucked his thumb. And you're like, oh. <laughs> you're like what? He's oh. like, I fucked her. I gave her a second pussy. It was so yeah, good. Yeah, and then you ask him. He's like, she's fucking lying ass slut. And yeah. you're like, so what? What actually happened? He's like, are you gonna believe her, bro? What are you gay? <laughs> yeah, and you're like, you I, don't, I don't know. She said, yeah. You know, you pick a chick side. Yeah, now? he's the kind of guy. He's the kind of guy. He's the kind of guy. Be like, why do you come suck my dick? And you're like, no, I don't want to suck your dick. He's like, what are you gay? Yeah, he like, yeah. tries to fucking bait Just you into you. it, dude. It's like one of those things too, where it's like Trump is like the thing. And even kind of the world in general, it's like things have gotten at times so bad and you like want things to be so good that if you just let go, it's like, it's so freeing. Like, yes. like last week, like an idiot, I have a five-year-old daughter and a 10-year-old stepson and I got, I got a new car and the inside of the car is white leather, which is just like, why would you do that with children? Yeah. But I got it and I was like... I thought I pressed a different button on the app when I ordered the car online, but it's got white leather now, so what can you do? And literally, the first day I had the new car, I go to pick up my daughter, get her in, sits in the car. She's like, oh, dad. I was like, how was your day at school? And she's like, I forgot to tell you right before dismissal. So like eight minutes ago, she's like, I pee peed in my pants. So I'm like, so are you yes. sitting in the car now full of urine? And then I feel it, and it's piping hot piss all over her stockings. And I'm like... Just let go. Yeah. You just got white leather. Now there's a piss stain on my 25 to 30 minute old car. Yeah. I, I drove it from the dealership to pick up my daughter to surprise her. And there's a piss stain now in the car immediately. And I could have gotten angry and been like, fuck it, man. But if you just let it go, because if that didn't happen, I would still, to this day, a week later, have been like, don't touch my car. Don't get it. Don't get chalk in it. Yeah. Don't nick it. Don't do that. Don't do that. But now it's like, there's already a piss stain in it. Yeah. So it's over now. I'm not going to beat the shit out of it, but it's like, just relax. That's how Things I get dirty. Times are bad. Just relax. That's kind of how I felt in 2016 when Trump got elected and everyone was like, it's the end. And you're like, well, there's nothing to do. Let go. Just let go. Let go. And he's going to do a lot of fucked up shit. So yeah. just let go, keep tabs. And, you know, hopefully in four <laughs> years, it's a little different. And now we're at the end and we're like, you still just keep, just stay let go. Just like, I'm, I'm trying to let go. It's just hard to let go. I don't know. It's, just fucking, it's, it's hard like, to let go because my oxygen level is dropping. Like, I'm, feeling, I'm feeling sick. I'm yeah, feeling it's like, like no, let it go. I'm doing deep breathing. But the problem is when you tell me to like, deep breathe, I'm only getting 85% oxygen. Where, I feel like, we're, I feel like <laughs> we were in a, I feel like we were in a pandemic four years ago and I could just. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is, for the around. I've been taking deep breathing and let it go, but now no. there's a respiratory, all this bug from the Chinese. It's from the same Petri uh, dish I'm gonna, as Jackie Chan and Yao Ming. And now I can't, I can't breathe. I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out of the hot tub. I want to get out of the hot tub. I'm going to faint. That's how it feels. Yeah. I'm going to faint. Yeah, man, it's... Yeah. But uh, I think a symptom of what we're going through is what we're talking about with, like, everyone getting canceled. And so... Right. Indigenous People Day, I think, is just a decency... Right. That should be allotted to the people that lived on this land before we showed up. I, I agree with you. Indigenous People Day, I got no problem with... But they want to take, the problem is when you're taking down the statues is, is the big, at least in New York, the statues is the issue. Like the comp I was saying from Bay Ridge, oh, yeah. my friend Ryan, Ryan Murphy, mm. that, you know where you know where he's going in November. Yeah, yeah, Ryan Murphy in Bay no, Ridge. No blue in his diet. No, not at all. Yeah. He won't do it. No, 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 no. He's, it's going to be a cherry popping daddy. Yeah. <laughs> that guy's all red. All, all the, red. All yeah, I bet he won't even, it's like a fucking blood. He won't even use <laughs> C's when he's typing out fucking text messages. That's what yeah. it is. It's all red all the time. He, on when he was off duty, this was two, three years ago, and they were talking about taking down the statue on Columbus Day. He, off duty, not sanctioned by the NYPD to do this, went with his service weapon and stood in front of the statue with a couple other off-duty cops like, not on my watch, not while I'm working for the NYPD, will you take down your statue? It's just... But, Ryan Murphy. But, you know, every fucking person does that with a different thing. Sure. Like... I, I always because it makes me laugh right. Think, thinking of defending a statue being it's like re, it's absurd. stay away from Robert E. Lee <laughs> stay away from him and yeah. it's like you do not touch him he lost this war but I fucking love him <laughs> I get that way when people like uh, attack like professional wrestling right. you know, they're like it's dumb and after a while for the most part I'm like okay it's pretty dumb and then they're like seriously it's just like the gayest shit and you're like hey you stop it it's, so, it's important to some of us <laughs> it's an escape mechanism <laughs> comedy comedy stand up comedy I am so protective of yeah. that when a fucking Instagram star or a fucking yeah f shitty actor like Jeremy Piven just starts doing stand up yeah. you're just like he's, he's a great actor he's a shitty comic but yeah. you're like 
you think about it and you're like, dude, I fucking, it bugs. That's where I get my defend statue. Yeah. Like, what's your defend statue line? What is your thing where you're like, right. I will fucking defend this thing? Sometimes I feel like I either genuinely don't care about anything or I'm violently depressed to the point that I'm numb to everything. Yeah. Because I don't, even while you were talking, I'm like trying to think of like, other than obviously my daughter and family. Well, that, that's your statue. That's, yeah. So I guess my daughter, of course, but. But uh, like uh, outside of family, because I feel like everyone defends family. There's just like you can kind of convince me like uh, they call me Chrissy Flip Flops because it's like I'm just whatever it is. I'm like, you can convince me of that or you can convince me of that. I kind of just don't care. I just want to try to have a happy, good day every day and just be fun and make people feel comfortable. And that's really about it. So I guess if if you try to take that, if you know what, you know what really would what really does bother me when I see someone uh, in life because I've all I've said this too on the show anything on Twitter now anything I don't believe it like if somebody tweets out look at these messages that I got that are racist it's like that is a Russian bot I unless you physically saw it yeah. I genuinely believe the Russian bots anybody who shits on me on Twitter anybody who says anything negative to me on Twitter I write back I go into Google Translate and I write you're a Russian bot and then I tweet it back That's at them great. and I That's write great. in Russian fucking hieroglyphics you're a Russian bot <laughs> That's, That's what great. I tweet constantly at people because I'm like you're not real it's all like this divisive mechanisms but in fi in the physical realm and space if I see if I see someone like making fun of someone or hurting someone's feelings, it really bothers me yeah. to the point where I, I almost always step in. I would so say you I, hate bully. Oh, bully. I hate it. I always step like in. Like actual real yeah. fucking Yeah, because I was bullied. That's yeah. why. So I fucking hate it. And I've stepped in like seriously at least twenty times throughout my life of something I've seen physic like on the train or what's your first line in interfering on a bully? Do you go like, Hey buddy, what are you doing? Well, I just like I saw <laughs> I, it was actually pretty funny. I was there was seventeen year old kids, whatever, six or seven year old kids on the train a couple of years ago, and then they were making fun of some fat kid who I'll be. I mean, he looked like he wasn't hygienic at all. Yeah. But somebody goes, I think his name was Edgar. He goes, Yo, Edgar. He was like, Yo, you smell like you about a ten thousand asses in one room. Yeah, and I was that's like, good. All right, that's you know, good. That's he said good. ten thousand asses in one room, stinky ass motherfucker. Yeah. And and then I, <laughs> and then and then I said and then I said to, you know like I just got up or whatever and everything and I was like yo dude to add, I I always go to the victim first yeah. always that's what I because I was like that's what I always want someone to do to me yes but instead of just calling me a little Wei homo Jean. you know yeah, yeah, my yeah. dad would do it like yeah. well just get over it you yeah. know what are you stop sucking peeing. dick stop peeing sitting down Christopher no I never get forget. up one time I got fucking like you know harassed in school and then my it was like a Saturday morning my dad comes to pick me up and she's my my mom's telling my dad like you know your son keeps getting bullied and he's like well stop getting his hair cut at supercut slid he looks great. like a fucking idiot <laughs> <laughs> stop giving him number seven and it's super cuts. Oh, man. You know, his kid's at the fucking lemon tree getting number eight. He's got a mushroom haircut. What do you think? He looks retarded. That's why, <laughs> you know? that's why when people are always like, um, people who grow up without dads have such dad issues. It's like, yeah, because you don't get... I would lo have loved that. Yeah. To been like, what are you doing, Trish? This kid's soft. Yeah. Instead, my mom's like, it's all your fault and you should probably think about it. And you're like, yeah. cool, I'm going to have raging anxiety for oh, the yeah. rest of my life. Yeah. No, I, I remember one time my... <laughs> I was like 10 and I, I wanted to join like um like a, you know the actors club or whatever they were calling it was like the actors or theater yeah. the theater a club that they had at my school and my mom was like you know to, oh she was on the phone with my dad and she was like um and she was like what do you think of uh, having Chris do the actors club and I could you know hear him I was right by the receiver and he was like uh Never gonna happen. He goes, you're gonna have to kill me first. And then, and then she like put her hand over the phone. She's like, I'd love to see that happen. And then like, you know, she's like she would always, she would always like talk shit. She would always say something nasty, dude, boys, but not let my dad hear it. But I would hear it. Boy, dude, let me tell you something about boys that are raised by moms. <laughs> yeah, we have a sassy level yeah. that most men don't have, or we're like, man, I'd like to see you do that. Yeah, <laughs> like, you, have, yeah. like, you, you totally have that when you grow up with a when you're raised by a single mom, and they just like kind of you're like yeah. you're their girlfriend that they dish to yeah. some times where they're yeah. like huh yeah well where was that in the marriage anyways <laughs> you know, you're, like, you're like ooh, ooh. Man, meow trish it's i'm gonna true. grab some hog and dogs yeah. are you being bad girls yeah <laughs> i know she told me yeah. i remember one time my dad i was like six years old to get on the phone and i was like dad like what do you do what do you do like for a living or like yeah. something about a job and my dad was like ah you know 
He was like, uh, right now, you know, I work in accounting. He's like, but I was almost the shortstop for the for the uh, shortstop for the New York Yankees. He's like, I was almost the shortstop for the New York Yankees, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. And my because my mom was like on the phone, but I could hear it. And my mom, yeah, she the same thing. She put her hand to the receiver. She's like, he never stood a chance. Yeah, was so like, yeah. I'll never forget it. She, I'll never forget her saying she he never stood a chance. Men, then, <laughs> men are brutal to women yeah. physically. Yeah, like, just throughout time, men are brutal to women physically. Just, with beating, whatever it is, like back to the caveman shit. Women, since the dawn of time, have been brutal to men emotionally. Oh my God. In a way where they can emotionally bully you in a way that a man will never be able to. Yeah. Where they're just like, he didn't stand a chance. And then yeah. you're like, yeah. <laughs> it's like, fuck, oh, fuck, that hurts. If your dad heard that now, he'd be like, well, hold on a goddamn second. Yeah. I could turn two with the best of them. Yeah. I bare handed a fucking. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Know. Even with my stepmom now, like I remember he once, uh, when I met my kid's mom, you know, she's pretty you know, Latina, Puerto Rican girl. So introduce, it's my dad, my stepmom, introduce her to, to my girl. And she's like, um, and then my dad's like, you got a hot mom for the old man? And then my stepmother's like, oh, she's like, hey, Tony, you're on dialysis. Do you think that that's what a hot mom would want? Like, even if she had a hot mom, yeah. you think that's what she wants to show up to your appointments every Tuesday and Thursday? Like I do, you fat fuck. Yeah. And then he was like, I'm going to trade this one in for two 25-year-olds. She was like, I'd love to see you try. Yeah. She was just like going yeah. out. Because that's what it is when you're married that long. It's just all honesty. She's like, if you could trade me, if you could get one 25-year-old, she's like, I'll gladly leave. I'll go to Florida, live in my father's house. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I love that. That's the kind of honesty that yeah. like, you need to fucking survive. You know what's awesome? Sports are back, baby. I mean, it's nice to watch the Yankees probably going to get knocked out of the playoffs, but I mean, what can you do? It's good to see my dad hitting my stepmom again. Sports are back, baby. MyBookie.ag. MyBookie.ag is what I've been using. Sports are boring. Games are boring unless you got a little bit of juice in them, okay? You want a little bit of juice on the game? You want some steaks? Even... It, because it doesn't even matter if you're vegetarian or not, you need some steaks. So mybookie.ag used the promo code hyenas, and they're going to claim a deposit match dollar for dollar all the way up to 1000 bucks. So if you want to put down $3, they're going to match $3. You know what I'm saying? All the way up to a G. Mybookie.ag. There's no, no shortage of sports right now. Everybody's playing. Baseball, basketball, the NBA finals are going on. Fucking golf. Whatever you want. They got mybookie.ag. I wonder if you can vote for who's going to win president at mybookie.ag. You probably can. And the, all I'm saying to you, Hyena fans, is do the right thing come November. Mybookie.ag, promo code Hyenas, H-Y-E-N-A-S, dollar for dollar, deposit match up to $1,000. Yes. 2020, the year of the bat. It's been trying to stop comedy, but it can't stop Chrissy Chaos. Coronavirus showed up in my body and saw there were too many viruses already, so it had to pick a different body to infect. October 23rd, 8 p.m. Go to wallstreettheater.live for tickets. I'm doing a live streaming stand-up comedy show. It's like pay-per-view for stand-up. It's going to be wild. You can get it wherever you live in the world for 24 hours. Buy the tickets. Invite your whole family over. You just got to buy it on one TV. If you went out to go see a comedy show right now, you'd probably die of COVID and spend hundreds of dollars. This is $25 for one ticket. Wallstreettheater.live. It's what Jesus wants you to do. If you don't do it, you're a communist pig. If you don't support this special, then you support the virus. October 23rd, 8 p.m., wallstreettheater.live. All right, so back to fucking Indigenous People's Day yeah. or the first People's Day. Um, so so basically, it, in, there's a, a, so it says in the history that we learned about it, it's a growing movement by Native American activists. And aren't Native Americans are all activists? I mean, we're, they're land. Well, no, I don't think they're left with much of an option but to fight for the tiny shit that we gave them. That's like, I love how like when people were, were yelling about the Cleveland Indians and the Washington Redskins, it's like, that wasn't Native Americans. They don't give a fuck. Like, nobody, that was all a bunch I of- I think it, be, it finally became- when when enough white people yes. were upset about yep. mascots, Native Americans were like, oh, well, if this is the thing that's going to bring right. attention to all the fucked up shit you've done to yeah. us. 
It should have been named the Washington Karens. Yeah, just, just like, oh, it. dude, I would have loved that. Could you that. imagine in their helmets just had a little blonde hair attached it's just to the, the Nancy, side? It's just the Nancy Grace haircut like <laughs> yeah, on it. the side logo. That's their helmet. Oh, dude, that would be great. And and their, fu- their fight song's called, Can I Speak to Your Manager? <laughs> yeah. Can I speak to your manager? <laughs> Go Karens! Go Karens! And we're back with the Patriots down 14-7 to to the Karens. Karens <laughs> driving the ball right Yeah, Dude, it's... Native Americans were like, oh, cool, yeah, you guys don't like that they call it the Indians? No. We they never had care. a chance to voice our opinion. I was doing hilarities. This was three, four years ago. I was doing hilarities at Great Club in Cleveland, and they were having a protest outside, uh, I guess, a progressive field, Cleveland, where the Cleveland Indians play. And it was like a hundred white people, mostly white women, with signs being like, name the Indians is offensive. And I'm like, no Native American people are here. They don't care. I feel like a Native American person would be like, I don't give a fuck about baseball. It's the fact that you built the stadium on my grandmother's wigwam. Yeah, That's was, what you did, you this scumbag. This was where we did our rain dance, and now yeah. it's a fucking Chevy lot. Yeah, we used to have TPs and fucking wigwams and... Longhouses here, and now it's just concession stands. Uh, you're talking to the Colorado kid. I mean, I grew up where you see that actively, where you're just like, "Oh fuck, look, yeah, this was this fucking Chick Fil A yeah. used to be where there was like yeah. probably buffalo just grazing, yeah." And then we came in, and the, I, I've said this before. I might have said this before on the show, but the fu- the most fucked up shit about I love history books now, especially about Colorado since I grew up there. But one of the things I found the most fucked up was that the repeater rifle when all the white white people started coming west and we finally had a repeater rifle that could, you, you know you could have multiple bullets in the rifle yeah. from the train and from the or before the train from the wagon trails and like the the wagon trains that they had going they would just shoot buffalo just to f- play with their rifles and the, which they, is like a this, sacred animal to the native americans they would use every import- piece of it more importantly though more importantly, it's keto. It was keto. No carbs. Yeah. So that's why you're getting fucking your your shreds. <laughs> yeah. Your shred zones. That's why they were ripped. Those guys were beyond keto. And they had uh genetically, Native Americans don't a full full bred Native American will not have the gene to go bald. They what? didn't they didn't see male baldness until white people came west and they started calling us bird people because we had long Roman noses and bald heads. Or vo- I think they called us vulture people or some shit like that. And it's just crazy to think that, like, bu- so back to the buffalo thing, though, what they would do is they would shoot buffalo with the repeater rifle, and then the buffalo would just be dead. Right. Now, Native Americans, when they would go hunting, they would hunt one or two buffalo and use every part, like you said. More importantly than the, the what it provided was they would clean it up. So they would take all the bones and everything that they used, and then th- it was just like that buffalo wasn't there. When they would shoot these buffaloes with this repeater rifle, what would happen is these carcasses would rot and it would attract scavenger predators like coyotes and wolves to come and eat the buffalo, right. which would then is a bigger problem for the Native Americans who are just like camped out somewhere. Yeah, they'll and attack now, them, eat their babies. Yeah, now they have wolves and coyotes coming into their camp, and they're like, what the fuck, just because there's raw meat. So then what happened is they started po- uh, putting like uh, poison down. When they would kill a buffalo, they would like sprinkle poison on it. The just, white people. Yeah, yeah. Just to be like, all right, there, now wolves won't come. There's your fucking problem. Right. But then what happens is now the poison gets into the soil and shit and horses and other people are in, in, ingesting this. So it was like a massive problem just from white people being like, oh, look at my pew pew. Yeah. <laughs> like, look at my pew pew. And they're just yeah. like shooting buffalo. And all these Native Americans are like, motherfucker, you're killing our food source uh, yeah. and all this other shit that we use. Yeah. So that was always the thing that I always found fucking crazy. It was crazy. systemic. Yeah, it was a from the issue. beginning, it was like, no, it was just, just, admi- <laughs> just admit Americans are really good at being greedy. And right. we, we're going to do what we want to do. Well, that's something we've always, that's the fucking birth of this country. Yeah. I want to do what I want to do. Right. And we still do it. Yeah. Look now, that's why Trump's popular. Yeah, it's free. I do what I want. I eat McDonald's and everyone's like, this guy fucking rules. Yeah. He's like, fuck Corona. You want to go outside? Let's mouth kiss. And they're like, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And all the nerds, Freedom. all the nerds are like, you shouldn't do that. That's not really good. You yeah. know? And no one wants to listen to a nerd. Right. No, no, no. Well, I, I, I think it can go down a little bit, B. I think, um, too, like, you know, like with, uh, with the way like America is, you know, now, like even white people, it's, it's interesting. Giannis and I, Giannis read the article and then he told me about it, but it was fascinating that actually, like, you know, like we're all created equal. It's like there's scientific proof now they believe that that's actually not true. Like we both, like 
the Europeans and people more northern from more northern countries come from a different strand of chimpanzee DNA oh, shit. than people more south. So it was like two slightly different, yeah. but slightly different, but actual different types of human beings. That's what they think. This it's all pre you know early science, but the northern European DNA, the one like that mostly white people are from, is like ten times more vicious chimp than the southern ones. I would 100% so, believe so that. So that's why it's like a European settler coming in being vicious. This article is saying there's scientific evidence that potentially very early stages backs all that up. Where yeah. It's like white people are just more evil because of their DNA. So white, yeah. That's what they said. White people are the pit bull of humans. Yeah. Where it's just like, if there's an un, if there's an unmanned white person that walks in, you go, what is he going to do? <laughs> yeah. What's he going to do? Yeah, can you really trust him? I feel uh, like, is he I, a rescue? Is he going to snap? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And then a Rottweiler walks in, we're like, he's the problem. <laughs> yeah. like, why? Because he's black? That's not <laughs> yeah. a big deal. This it's, fucking, this gray pit bull is a much bigger problem. Much bigger issue. But it's, uh, like also if you read Guns, Germs, and Steel, which I've Jared uh, Diamond. Man, if yeah. I've taken like seven stabs at that and only gotten halfway. It's so hard. It's I so, so hard to read. Fucking I've tried hard. to I I've read I've read I would say about half. Then I tried to listen to it. Woo. It's just I just it's can't dense. It's dense. so dense yeah. that you reread pages. You have to reread a bunch of the pages. But something that they talked about about the difference between northern hemisphere evolution of humans and southern hem hemisphere evolution was, you know, you had ore and you had fucking iron and you had steel. You had all these things that they could make, you know, into ships. And because we, it was on their land. You yeah, it was just yeah. there. It was just like a natural resource that they learned through the... Well, the, the credit, I believe, in the book that they give is like winter made those humans go into caves and inside and make tools. Right. Whereas the Southern Hemisphere, you, you could always stay outside. So, right. And you used wooden tools. Right. And there, there wasn't a, you know, a need to create a fucking... Yeah, because there was one battle, I remember in that in that book, Gun Germ Steel, I forgot where it was, where it's like, I think the European settlers, settlers, maybe it was Spanish settlers, went to some country and had horses and steel guns. Oh, yeah, it was and, Montezuma. It and was the other they people went, came out with like Mexico. wooden sticks, like, woo! Yeah. Like, they just got obliterated. Yeah, dude, it's yeah. like, it, when Cortez led all those Spaniards to fucking Mexico, well, the first thing that always blows my mind about that is how the human brain works the natives in when when the spaniards were coming in had no clue what ships were they'd never right. seen a ship they had right. never been around a ship so the brain couldn't wrap yes. around what it, they thought they were gods yeah because they so just, the brain they almost down. didn't see it it was no. like that's not there until they until they docked until they landed on the on the shores they didn't know that they were they couldn't see the armada coming they were like right. Oh, and I was like, oh, what a nice day. And Look at sudden, those weird clouds. Yeah, and then they had silver hats <laughs> and they had these, you know, Spanish Mustangs. Right. Which is crazy when you think about the Spaniards coming over in full fucking steel with with cannons and shit. Yeah. And these people have spears and they're like, cool, cool, cool. Yeah. And, and then... What have you guys been up to? I yeah. Like, uh, <laughs> but the story that I like is that, you know, then you see the Comanches who are... Bloodthirsty, right? Yeah, but... Before the before the arrival of 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 horses in North America, and this is in the book. Um, oh man, uh, Rogan pumps it all the time. Um, Dawn of, of something, the, Summer Moon. Yeah. Um, uh, fuck. Many thanks, Summer Moon. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's about the last. It's about the last um, Comanche chief, and about like the dealings with that. But they do a great history on that about where the tribe came from, and you know they were just like these small, little ferocious tribe that everyone shit on and right. it's like you guys suck then the spaniards come they introduce the mustang i think it's the mustang it might be a different horse and the f they get it yeah and then um the comanches learn how to ride better than everybody right. and they become the most dominant yeah native american tribe in the southern united states and right. the western to the point where the Mexican army doesn't want to fuck with them. Right, right. To the point where the fucking Spaniards don't. Because like, the they're so good on horses. They're just so dangerous. Right. And they, just, they fucking control the planes that they're like, I ain't fucking with these people. Right. Well, that's the thing. Like, engineering is the thing that always wins, like, the war. Like, in the beginning, yeah. like, with the Blitzkrieg, with the Nazis, they were just better at, they had better planes and better tanks. And then once you catch up, it evens out. That's and, then why, you, like, and then you get an A-bomb. Yeah, yeah, just suck on that, fuck face. You know, what's interesting is I actually then read a book that said, and this was a thing where it's like, you know, we dropped the A-bomb, but like we really didn't have to, especially mm -hmm. the second one didn't have Woo! to. That's my favorite in Colin's show where yeah. he goes, give him hell, Harry. And he goes, hey, I think we did. That second one seemed a little unnecessary. 
Yeah, like, that, was that was a lot. <laughs> yeah, no, that was, yeah, whoopsie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it was like they, uh, I read a book that was interesting that said just to show like, so that, the reason why I bring it up is because there is, even though I'm a fucking patriot, America, yeah. there is a lot of things where you really learn about American culture and Indigenous Peoples Day and Columbus Day and why there's all this fighting. If you stay kind of just in your little bubble here, like some of my friends in, you know, like if you just stay, for example, like in Bay Ridge, yeah. or something like that, I understand how you firmly believe everything that you've been taught because you haven't been offered anything else. And I get it. That is your belief. That's your truth. And that's real. But when you start to read books or watch documentaries from the enemies of America's point of view, then you start to be able to merge things together and you start to see like, oh, wait, that's what happened. Because, you know, how we were saying before, like they'll just say Nina, P uh, you know, Nina, Pia, Santa Maria, yeah. Pita, Santa Maria. You know, that's just what it is. But then you realize like, well, that's not actually the truth. That's, that's the tale we've been given as Americans. But in reality, it's like, yeah, we did a lot of, well, Columbus did a lot of unnecessary things. Andrew Jackson with his Indian Removal Act, May 28th, 1830. Um, he allowed the government to divide land um, west of the Mississippi to give to Indian tribes in exchange for the land they lost. But so these are those are I think what you're talking about is what they called the at the time they called them the nine civilized tribes, which mm. were like the Seminoles. And there's a bunch of other ones. But there's right. it's basically all the all the Native Americans that lived in eastern United States were displaced uh, at first up into Minnesota. Yeah. Like the Sioux were pushed yeah. like west and then. Um, eventually they just keep coming for that land. You yeah, know, white people, we, yeah. we can never get a full belly. Can never get enough. As Yana says, never. there's no end to up. <laughs> yeah. So, but so like, that's a thing where like, you know, jump back and forth like that. Uh, you know, the, the Indian Removal Act and then the Trail of Tears, which was 1838 with President Martin Van Buren, which is a high school in Queens. Yeah. Sent federal troops uh, to march the remaining Southern Cherokee. I used to have a Jeep Grand Cherokee. Uh, 1,200 miles to Indian territory in the plains. I just said plain yogurt. Um, and disease and starvation were rampant and thousands die along the way. So a group of Seminoles, shout out FSU, uh, good luck to Bobby Bowden, refused yeah. to leave and hunker down in Florida. Uh, they fought federal troops for almost a decade before their leader was killed and they finally surrendered. So, so like a lot of things happened where the U.S. just really were fucked up to the Indians for many, 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 many years. I mean, I would probably say the entire... 19th century and obviously half of, i mean and since then right. has been um making deals to make up for fucked up shit that we do right. and then just completely pulling out of that right so it'd be right. like it'd be like if i did something fucked up to you and i'm like you know what dude let me take you out to dinner yeah let me take you out to dinner the fucked up and i go you know what i gotta cancel dinner give me five bucks and you're like, how did that happen? You go, just give me five bucks or I'm going to beat you up. Yeah, it's just And they're like, is. well, what the fuck? Then, you know what? I'm going to take you to a movie. I, I missed on dinner. Let me, and it's yeah. just promises that never, never fucking, fucking happened. happened. Yeah. Um, in, like even, even Oklahoma was shit land to the Native Americans that lived. Like right. the, the Comanches and the Cherokee and the Apache and the Arapaho and everything that was up north near the Platte River and the Western Sioux. They basically came in and they took all this land that it's where I grew up. It's where my fucking, that's why I say the reason I'm interested about this shit is I definitely have blood on my hands. Yeah. Definitely have blood on my jeans. Yeah. My grandfather was born in Alt, Colorado in the 20s, yeah. which means he saw his dad do some fucked up fucked shit, up shit. the Native yeah. American. Yeah. You know, he abandoned the family. Shout out Benjamin Miller. <laughs> <laughs> uh, took off. <laughs> it runs in our blood. <laughs> Running runs in our blood. <laughs> but if you grew up in Colorado and you had this like Colorado pride, because ever I left Colorado when I was 17 or 18, and my mom still lives there. My, I have a lot of family still there, and I love Colorado. I'm still big. And did you go, like, right to Alaska? No, I went to Arizona. Because like you, you just have that white thing, and you were like, I will find new territory. Yeah, dude. I, <laughs> I, have, ex, I have that explorer gene yeah. <laughs> where I was like, where can I take what's rightfully mine by divine intervention? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I must manifest destiny myself. <laughs> so I moved to Arizona, and I was like, this is sad. <laughs> and, then yeah. I, and then I lived with my aunt in Alaska for a little, but I... Growing up in Colorado, I, I love that I've grown up there. I love a lot of stuff about Colorado, and it's became a very popular place for people to move now. And a lot of people, like, love Denver. They're like, I lived in L.A., but now I'm just, like, so Denver. Yeah. I hike. I ride my bike to work. And you're like, all right, you're dumb. Shut up. Yeah. What I'm saying is 
I find it now more interesting to be like, oh, what is the history of Colorado? Yeah. Because I know it as a white kid that grew up in the suburbs right. that went to fucking the Aurora Mall right. or went to fucking, you know, like the Best Buy on Mississippi. Right. And you're like, oh, it was the Best Buy. And you're like, did you know that that actually plot of land be- belonged to the Legal? You know, like yeah. something where you're like, whoa, shit, that's pretty fucked up. When? Hundreds of years ago? And they're like, no, a hundred years ago. <laughs> yeah. Like, Fuck. Yeah. <laughs> Your grandmother was like, don't get me started yeah, about she that. Yeah, I dated one. <laughs> like, what? He would scrape. He would flip me around on his horse. Yeah, I dated Never Calls You Back. That was his name. <laughs> he goes, Mary, sorry, Mary Lou. I just felt like we didn't really hit it off. <laughs> the son told the coyote to not call you. <laughs> like how they get out of not calling back women. Yeah. I, went, I went to the river for a message but realized that the snake had taken my love for you. It's like, <laughs> what does that mean runs with storms? It it's means like, I'm having sex with your sister. It, it means I'm kind of over it. <laughs> yeah, like, just gotta be like, I, well, you can get out of anything by just blaming it on the fucking a- elements. Yeah, just listen to the to the soul of the of the yeah. world, and you can blame anything. Like, <laughs> yeah. Damn, why didn't you show up? And you go, oh, I just felt like the wind, the uh, yeah. the, the soul of the wind yeah. told me to go home and take a nap. Anytime I'm about to break up with a girl, I just start doing meditation and yoga, just so I can be like one with my spirits to like blame it on that. Yeah. Like, I'm just really doing a lot of inner, yeah. inner work. It's not you. It's my chakras say that it's not right. And yeah. do you respect that? And she's like, yeah. Now, I if do. you had any Native American blood, you can tell them that an eagle came and saw you. Yeah. And, and brought the spirit of the wind. <laughs> and then it's just yeah. like, see ya. Yeah. I am destined for other pussy. <laughs> They're like, what? <laughs> I don't think you can say it like that. But it's, it's so fucked up because when you love Colorado and stuff, like, it's kind of what you're saying. You have to learn... The fucked up parts. Yeah. Like the fucked up parts is part of it. Right. It's like Japanese people yeah. don't read our no. history of World War II where they're like, Nagasaki, yay! Yay! Like, no. Of course, we bring dishonor. We should be cute. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> they're not happy that we fucking no. rocked. Two, dude, if Indianapolis in Pittsburgh would have gotten fucking nuked, yeah, yeah. you wouldn't be like, oh, yeah, yeah, dude, dude, just for invading fucking Pearl Harbor, the most outpost we have from mainland United States. It's so far. My grandfather, to the day he died, wouldn't eat sushi. Yeah, just dude. because they hit something that's kind of our country that most Americans, that's on the other side of the world. I, I remember hearing someone be like, I went to Pearl Harbor and I heard the Japanese people like cheer. When they go there, it's like, I think I would. Yeah. I think I'd be like, yeah, we sucker punched you. Yeah, at Remember? least we got one. Yeah, you got, we caught you slipping, you well, no, because, fucking dumb piece of shit. But that's the thing. It's like, it's like, oh, Japan, you know, the, the whole thing is what that, with that is like, they were like, why would people, why would they want to do that? It's like, they're terrorists. They're the first terrorists. Like, no, it's because they fucking had no choice because yeah. the United States was cut off their oil supply. So the country can't run on oil. So they were like, okay, to stop the Chinese, we're going to have to just fucking cut everyone's oil off. And they were like, well, where country's going to lose? We're, we're going to be dead if we have no oil. So they were like, the only chance we really have is instead of a fair fight, we're just going to try to fucking suck a Dude, bunch of, guy that, like the slippery japs that we are. Yeah, no, I'm kidding. The guy, just, bring, the the guy brings it up. Bob, Bob, I'm kidding, Bob, I'm kidding. Bob. Edit that part out. Wait, uh, <laughs> But Dan, no, clip it. You should, you should listen to it. There's a great episode of Dan Carlin's podcast. Yeah. Um, where he talks about where the Japanese were coming from in right. the attack of Pearl Harbor. And it's very interesting to listen to that. Yeah. They had this thing of like, we're worried about China. We're in a yes. much larger conflict with China. And we have been for hundreds yeah. of years. We have to make this move on America. Yeah. And this is what it's going to be. Let's just, yeah, it's what it's going to be. So instead of trying to fight the U.S. toe to toe, which we'll definitely lose, let's try to knock out their whole uh, fleet in one shot. And that's what happens. And then, obviously, as the war goes on, the thing about the nukes was where it was really the United States was like, kind of like, we were like, oh, it was like, uh, kind of like a, a, just a ploy by FDR to be like, oh, we, we're going to need to invade mainland Tokyo. And then millions of soldiers will die. That was never true. That yeah. Japan was on beyond its last legs. Yeah. They were like done, done, done. And it was really ru- They weren't really scared of the United States. They weren't, they weren't. It was Russia that was going to say, hey, we're coming next. So in order, so they were just about to surrender. The United States was about to surrender because the Red Army had just beat Hitler. And they were like, now we're, now we're coming in. We're going to fuck with you. 
And then, so Japan, Japan was like, okay, now we're going to really surrender. But in an effort, because the United States then saw Russia gaining power. Yeah. Like, oh, these motherfuckers think yeah. that they're going to come in here and beat Japan. Let us show them, let us show our secret weapon, concoct a story to say, oh, we have to main, we have to invade mainland Tokyo. Not true. They drop the atomic bomb, decimate Hiroshima. And then for no reason at all, they dropped the second one to really show Russia and say, hey, babe, don't we'll do forget, yeah. we got two. Yeah. Okay. So that's so they really sacrifice. They destroy, and then and then they come up. Same thing where they're like to hit you at the dinner was the Marshall plan. Was like we're gonna get you guys back. Here's baseball, yeah. and then they just abandon it. They were like, we're gonna have teams here. It's gonna be great. We're okay, now we Yankees. Look, we gotta make a Donuts. Yeah, and then, go. and then, Everything's and then, all right. You guys make it cool. You guys yeah, make it cool. And like, yes. yeah, yeah. We'll keep going. We'll keep rebuilding. Like, get the fuck out of here. So that's that what is, That's a weird. I never thought about that. That is. That's you, what it was. That's yeah. that's the truth. Truth, that's when you read the from the point of view of the enemies that is the truth that's just what happened even some things with with the nazis where it's like the whole idea of eugenics which is why initially the nazis wanted to take people to put them in the holocaust was obviously you know they were working on experiments with them to try to like gene scissor and mutate genes and then you know, then they came up with the idea of, of killing them all. But that was later on. The initial plan was let's have them work and then let's let's experiment with their genes. But they got that whole idea from the United States. The United yeah. States were the first ones in like the 1920s and 30s to do gene uh, stuff on I people. Mean, so it's like Tuskegee Airmen. There was like a lot of yeah, shit. So it's that like we, there's so many things where like America's not innocent. You know, that yeah. doesn't make me say I want to hate America. No. But it's just good to learn. But these things like there are these over correctness where it's like, really, now we're going to fight about Indigenous Peoples Day. It's like, just fucking shut up. It, just okay. kind of admit that there's blood on our hands. And yeah. that, that helps the whole situation. I, it's also like when you see a good marriage like a really good marriage yeah. and they had this honesty where they're like yeah she was a slut for like 10 years and, yeah. then, and now we're great and now you're we're like, great and yeah. you're like nah kind of fucking it gets yeah. me going yeah she was like, like what it. do you want me to do I fucked yeah. this brother and it was 10 years yeah, ago yeah whatever we're different I think people now yeah and you're like I love her god I love her but they, they just yeah. acknowledge a shared history where Shit. and that's what it is it's like call an indigenous people's day or Columbus day that shouldn't be a fight like that shouldn't be like I'm taking a stand on one or the other it's stupid it's entitlement it makes us feel like it made this, I don't know this year if you'll have such a stink about what it's going to be called because now we're in a fucking pandemic. Yeah, bigger So issues. it's like now, it's like the same thing. It's like now nobody cares. We were saying this last podcast, like nobody cares about the straws anymore. Nobody cares if there's plastic being used on the ventilator that could strangle the turtles. You're like, so funny get to- my grandma a tube down her fucking throat. Yeah. I don't care if Flounder's got to die. <laughs> yeah, you're like, sorry. <laughs> we're losing Raphael, Donatello, and Leonardo. They're fucking but out. But Nana's going to make it to Christmas. Yeah, so all right. Are you happy now, you yeah. fucking cuck? But this is that's that's kind of just the, the exact prime example of what all this shit is. It's like I bet Native Americans don't really give a shit about the Indigenous Peoples Day as much as they. I don't, I'm not speaking for them, but I'm saying like, look at the Dakota Pipeline. You look yeah. at fucking dude. Look at Sturgis this year. Sturgis happens in the Black Hills of South Dakota, okay. which is Lakota Nation. Okay, it's it that is still the, that's like their most sacred land. And Sturgis is a part, and they had like oh, 300,000 people without masks during yeah. COVID just being like, whatever. And it was the protests of the natives that were there that were like, dude, fuck this. Yeah. Why are you guys coming in and just bringing that? This is, you're doing it again. Yeah. You're doing the thing again. Yeah. Where you're bringing a disease in when we're telling you we don't want you here. <laughs> yeah. and we're like, hold on. I got to see fucking Smash Mouth <laughs> outside without a piece of libtard cloth on my face. Yeah, it's like I'm wearing, I might as well be wearing somebody's foreskin on my face. If you just want to see history repeat itself, <laughs> go read up about uh, about the Sioux Nation protesting Sturgis rally this yeah. year, the bike rally, because yeah. it's just a bunch of fucking fat people with hepatitis being like, I don't believe in that. And you're like, hey, you guys suck. Just a, You're the problem. Yeah. It's not like... Um, you're doing the lead. I don't know, man. It just that that bugged me, like reading that, because you're like, man, you guys are just doing the same thing. It's the same thing. But you're just acting like, but it's my rights. <laughs> I'm supposed. I go to Sturgis every year, and I watch my wife, my fat wife, get gang banged by the Hell's Angels, and then I go home. And then I go home, and I listen to Legion of Skanks. Yeah, which <laughs> shout out Legion of Skanks. Shout out Legion of Skanks. Uh, yeah. Um, but see the, the whole reason why, cause a lot of people are like, oh, we've never even met a native American. Why do we care? That's on purpose. The United States government in the 19th century adopted a policy to isolate and concentrate native Americans in places with few natural resources, far from con 
far from you know, contact with the developing U.S. economy because they knew that their land that they were living on had all the shit. And they were like, let's just move them over here and we'll, you know, their new home, they'll forget about their their old home and they'll like their new home. And now they just all live on, for, for the most part, reservations uh, making Arizona iced tea. That's Yo, just dude, what it is. I've thought about this. What makes you shit? Does anything make you shit as much as when you drink a fucking can of 99 cents Arizona iced tea? Honestly, I'm, I'm too adapted to it. You, it's just fine. I can. Uh, I, it's been a while yeah. until I found out how much sugar was actually in there. But I used to rip those green teas. Oh, um, dude! I used to drink the raspberry iced teas oh. and then just let it rip. I mean, shit my pants. Oh. It was crazy. Yeah, I thought the green teas were healthy. <laughs> no, <laughs> I genuinely thought the Arizona green teas were. I for four years of my life, I scientifically were like, yeah, this is like a healthy green tea. I'm like, yeah. I get in chamomile and yeah. zinc and stuff. Do they have it. Arizona iced tea anymore? Do they make it, or I just yeah, don't look for it. it anymore? No, they make I it. I guess because like once you grow up and you realize how much sugar is in, like your mind is always like, don't ever go near that. Like <laughs> yeah. Mountain Dew. I'm like, do they stop making Mountain Dew? It's like, no, your brain just let, just says you can't have that, so it's out. Yeah, when they you're got, a kid, you're like, yeah. No, but they got they got new flavors now, dude. Of Mountain Dew. Oh yeah, they got yeah. Like, they got Baja Blast. You got fucking. Oh. You can get into it, dude. You got multiple flavors. But it's what we were talking about, like with the with the Native Americans and all that kind of shit, is it's they gave them land. Dude, I didn't think about this until recently. In, in fact, it was I I think what made me think of it was the last time I was on History Hyenas. Yeah. When I was in fifth grade okay. in Aurora, shout out Mission Viejo Elementary School. Shout them out. Roadrunners, dude. Yeah. Getting it done. Mission Viejo, it's, it just sounds like a good burrito. It is. A mission, you, I'd like the Mission Viejo burrito that, with extra guac. Can I do a Mission Viejo with no beans? <laughs> oh, that's good. That's pretty good. And you go, you guys do queso fresco on that? Or, or what do you do? Or do you do chihuahua cheese? Um, <laughs> but they, uh, in fifth grade, they took us to a fucking reservation. Wow. To see how life is on the reservation. And there's just other 10-year-old kids there that are like, hey. Yeah. I remember being- That live like, in your neighborhood that you would never meet. No, but I'm saying like, they're not even in my neighborhood. We went to their reservation, dude. We went to Eastern Colorado. Oh, so to the hours native, away. Dude, they don't put them in like fucking Inglewood or fucking Littleton. Yeah. They put them in like far east, like Sterling, like fucking out. And you go out there and it's like dirty, dusty, because it's not, it's not by any good land. Right. And you're just this 10-year-old kid looking at another 10-year-old kid. And he's like, hey, you know, like, I remember they would, like, come up and see us. And we'd be like, hey, you know, like, kind of hey, talk to You were ships to them? They were like, yeah. oh, oh, a Toyota. White child. Oh, a yellow <laughs> school bus. Um, yeah, it's not real. But I always remember the craziest thing you about that. with an arrow. Yeah. Funk. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. ah, oh, God. A couple of us came back without hair. We got scalped. <laughs> yeah. Way Jong Jan. But I remember getting on the bus and being like, yo, this is a field trip for us. Right. And we're going home. Yeah. They just live here. You kind of went to like a zoo for humans. Yes. That's, that's exactly what, what I was thinking. Yeah. It's like a zoo for humans. They go, you want to watch them feed? And you yeah. go, I don't know if I'm real comfortable with that. Yeah. But that's what. Look at how he eats the chicken fingers. Yeah. With but, his tools are made from mammoth bones. Way but that's what the Bureau of Indian Affairs did. <laughs> is they came in and they're like, hey, they don't want this. Right. You, you, and the land just looks gross. You said it's like dilapidated, beat just, down. Look up most native, like... Because it's not U.S. property, right? Isn't there, like, a jurisdiction? It's, like, what's it's, going it's to your native, not? It's, yeah, reservations. Like they Listen, there are, like, areas that are that are reservations that have somewhat nice land. But if you look into it, dude, running water and electricity is a fucking... Is that a chief? It's a prop. Yeah. <laughs> Runs with water. And they, go, <laughs> Run. and they go, no, actually, we need running water. Oh, and they you're go, like, oh, this is my friend. Oh, Runs okay. with water. Like, no, water, dirt. All right. I thought, uh, you know, argues with a point, made a good point. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, um, they put them in places where you're like, oh, this is kind of shitty. Right. Yeah, because I, I, is there even an Indian reservation in the state of New York? There must be. There must be. It's there just is. like, we would never, can we just show up and go or like, like you're, I don't know, man. You can't just enter their land, No, right? it's, you usually have to enter with a member of the tribe. My aunt uh, in California worked at the, in Northern California with the Scotts Valley tribe, and she, like, did, like, a lot of medical work for them. Like, right. She just basically ran the office at their medical facility. Look, that's the old governor, David Patterson, who we say looks, our fans say looks like Giannis. If you, you just, you just had him clicked. There we go. Yeah, David. David That's it, so funny. Because they say, cause they, say Giannis is, they say Giannis's eyes are too close together and David Patterson is blind. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They say Giannis's eyes are too close. So they always put it. They always put them. Yeah. So, okay. oh, yeah. Cigarette taxes. So that's a hustle that have been, that Native Americans have had for a long time, which is, 
you know, just come to our reservation and we'll sell you cheaper cigarettes. Right, right. Which is what, yeah, that, and that's still to this day the same, right? Yeah, well, a lot of it is, but it's, um, right. I mean, they were supposed to be sovereign, which is what you were saying. It's supposed to be sovereign land, really. Right. Like these people, it's like there's a police force, there's a, there's a, there's supposed to be a hospital and shit, but, when you are the fucked up thing that America does to the reservation is they don't help them. Right. Or they barely help them. Right. They're not like, here's a hospital. Yeah. Here's a fucking, they won't do it. Now they're just like, well, you, it's your own land, make your own shit. It's like this. They're like, all right, now you're in your room. Cook for yourself. Here we go. So it's modern Indian reservations still exist and they fall into the Bureau of Indian affairs, the BIA. And it says that, um, it says that tribes on each reservation are sovereign and not subject to federal laws. So do they have to wear masks on their reservations? Probably not. If not if, you, if Biden if, wins. If Biden wins, they all will. But if Biden wins, a, we're all going to be wearing foreskin on our face. There's a great, um, there's a great foreskin. I'm not going to put some. That's what my dad some, calls it. Really? He's like, what am I going to put this piece of foreskin on my face? I'm like, it's either that or die of COVID. I'm not going to put some fucking. He's like, I'm not going out with fucking some dick on my lips. What are you talking about, bro? I'm not going to have some cuck. Yeah. Have me wear a piece of cloth. I told him to put on a mask in March, and he was like, I didn't know I had a gay son. I thought Pride Month was June. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm looking for this. There's a there's a great, there's like a, um, I'm trying to think of the word of what it is, a nonprofit called huh. called Dig Deep. Dig Deep? Yeah. Dig, Can we find that? If possible? Digdeep.com, and they, uh, they do like, they helped out the, the Navajo. Website. They work specifically with the Navajo tribe. Where they like, um, they try to bring fresh water to okay. uh, to Americans who need it the most, and it's funny when it's the Americans that need it the most are Native Americans. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, where we took all their land and didn't give them any fucking clean water. Right. But you'll see, they do like the there Navajo Water Project, and they do like they do a lot of stuff. They do a lot of fucking good work, man. Yeah. It's also Flint. They they helped out a lot in Flint. Right. And basically, what they do is they just bring clean water so people can use it, but. Most of their work goes with like Navajo reservations and right. shit. And you're like, damn, dude, we took yeah. your land and we don't even give you clean water. We don't care at all. I know it's it's. But the thing is, though, too, where it's like this is another symptom of social media. That's like the pros and the cons of it is like it's amazing. It's amazing that we can help out, you know, things like this. But you kind of have to pick and choose because if you let your mind try to get consumed by all the problems that are actually never going to physically affect you, Yeah, you're going to wind up burning out and just feeling like there's no hope at all, where it's like, pick one cause that's close to you that could affect you. And if everybody does that, like if, if the people who live outside this reservation feel like, oh, hey, that affects me, then help them. Yeah, you know, the people around that help them because it's like, don't rely on some idiot from Brooklyn to do that or go help out something that's happening in injustice. Because yes. then it's like, it, you just get consumed. It's like, how can I help and what can I give to that's close to me? And everybody does that, times the population, and then it's okay. But these people that live near that, you know, we have the idea of like, oh, why don't you help out the people that are around you? But to them, they're like, they're criminals. Right. They're criminals. Well, yeah, they've been driven to crime right. because they don't have any resources. And you're like, no, 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 no. Those people are criminal. Like, no. dude, you hang out. I hang out with my grandma, and she lives in, like a, a, like, a small, very rural town, and she hangs out with older people, and you get their opinions on shit. Oh, boy. They get fucking wild, where yeah. you're like, dude, you are racist. <laughs> yeah. You are straight up. Like, uh, people over 70 have a racism. They throw heat that nobody can imagine. <laughs> yeah, when you hear an old person say, I have a colored friend, you're like, yeah. oh, they're not a friend. Man, my favorite story is I took, yeah. my, I took my grandma to the... My grandma's lived in the Bay Area since the 30s. Go Niners. Go Niners. Diehard Niner fan. I took her to the second to last game at Candlestick Park in 2014 against the, uh, against the Rams. And we're like, on the way to the stadium, we're like on Lombard Street driving south. Or no, no, Lombard only goes towards... Anyways... I'm like getting confused on fucking uh, directions in, in San Francisco. Dad. But I was in the car with her and we're at the stoplight and our windows are down because it's like a nice day out and this woman laughs and my grandmother goes, oh, I could tell from her laugh she's oriental. And I was like, all right. <laughs> all right. right. She's like, oh. Yeah, and I was like, I, that, what a racist. <laughs> tee tee tee. Oh. Is she, she, she has a yeah. geisha fan. She goes, oh, I could tell by her fan that <laughs> yeah. she was a geisha. A geisha. She's a guy. Yeah. She's a geisha. So, oh, so, ha, ha, dee. <laughs> yeah, dude, but it's because they're they just have a different right. But right. man, yeah, I but, know. oh, the reason I brought that up is my mom has a friend Sharon that just sounds fucking racist. 
Wow, is she racist? It's big she's tits. So, it sounds like she has big bombs. No, no, no. no, no. Oh. She weathered lady, okay. very weathered lady, and she. Uh, we were having a conversation. I, it's the only time in my life where I was just like, "Wow, you're straight up racist." And she goes, "No, I'm not." And I go, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. you just said the blacks are lazy." And she <laughs> yeah. goes, "Well, they are." And you're like, "You're just straight up I'm racist." Fucking racist. So the only time in my life, I've genuinely said that to someone. Where I was like, you are a, you're a fucking racist. But it's and almost like, like even that, like getting mad at Sharon or getting mad at our grandparents, it's almost like it's almost like silly because like they're so set in their ways. So like they're part of the community too. Don't listen to their opinions. As time goes on, I think we're all getting better. Yeah. There's so many our kids will have so many less Sharons in the world than Sharon did when she was a kid. That's just how it is. So it's like, it's happening. Everything's moving forward. I think people get so fixated and this person says something bad to me on Twitter or there's a racist guy in my neighborhood. It's like, yeah, he's 80 years old and he's probably <laughs> doesn't think he's racist. Just like a lot of these people in history didn't think they were doing bad times. It's just products of their environment and our environment's getting better, but people just want to stay stuck in the chaos and stay stuck in the anger because it's like a driving force for them but i almost feel like just let them be it's like you almost want a few racists so you could say hey to my kid don't be like that yeah. that's an example of what not to do it's almost like too like that's i can see the argument of like keeping up every statue as opposed to like hey we're not honoring this confederate person we're saying this is they lost and this is not what we want and this is part of history that's not good there's still they have some statues i believe up in in germany of uh, some Nazi stuff is still up there just as a reminder of the kids be like, hey, that's not a part of our, we don't like that part of our history. I'm pretty sure that if you're German, you're aware of what went down in the tw 30s and 40s. Yeah, you're like, wait, what? Yeah. Where you're what like, did we do? Oh, fuck, we did that. Where that <laughs> feels like- Could you imagine you didn't know? But that feels like a more, <laughs> yeah, where you're like, oh man, that's so weird. So grandpa was like a bad guy. And yeah. Like, pretty bad. But <laughs> Germany, Japan- <laughs> <laughs> South South Africa. Yeah. They do this thing where they acknowledge what they do. America seems special in the fact that we're just like, now what? Yeah. They're like slavery and you're like, ah, come on. Yeah. We still bringing that up? And you're yeah. like, I don't know, Native Americans. We put them on reservations and we're like, I mean, we're really going to change you from Columbus Day. I like Columbus. We can't call him Columbus. And you're like, I don't know, maybe get him fresh drinking water and then we can call it Columbus Day? Yeah. How about just, we get him some fucking decent... How about we just kind of help him out a little and then we could call it fucking White Dude with Pink Dick Day. Yeah, we whatever We get it is. all fucking nuts. We can get fucking nuts if we want to. But the, the that's the only, like, woke part of me is, like, why don't we help out the people that just are still out, yeah. going through this shit? Put a, put, a brand, put a part of our tax money to help them out and that's what it should be, but I guess it's just not. Do my... Um, I heard like the wokest shit out of someone that's in their 60s where I was right. like, damn, that's fucking crazy. I haven't heard that. A, a Republican, a Republican woman was like, yeah, I, I think, call her a patriot. Yeah, she's a true patriot. But <laughs> I would I would guess I, I'm not for sure, but I know she voted for Trump in 2016. Mm -hmm. Think she, maybe she'd vote for Trump in 2020. Mm -hmm. She was like, she smokes weed. We were smoking weed. And she, and she was like, yeah, I think um, I think. Uh, blacks and Native Americans should be able to get the license to sell legal weed. Like, I think that's what we should do. It's like, give them the licensing to sell, to open dispensaries and stuff. And you're yeah. like, damn, that's woke as fuck. That'd be woke because you know what? All that would go a long way because I do know when I went to, Giannis and I went to Germany, our history tour guy told us, the reason why Jews have been able to assimilate back into German society and culture, of course, there's always anti-Semitism. There's hate yeah. and racism anywhere you Everywhere. go against every group. Everywhere. Somebody doesn't like somebody for some reason. It's just, you, were, you were talking about falling into uh, problems that have no effect on you. Yeah. Your boy went through a big phase of eating edibles and reading up on the Sudanese Civil War. And that, uh, <laughs> yeah. That'll rock you. That'll rock you. <laughs> yeah, and it's like, it's horrible, but it's like, there's horrible things happening all day, every day. There's so many people, it's just the numbers are what they are. But they said all the, Ger not all, one of the things the German government did is like in the 1950s, they gave Jewish citizens money, like a little bit of money. They're like, we know this isn't going to solve the problems. Sure. But here's some money, kind of like reparations, to just be like, we are sorry the new German government like wants you here and like made it very easy for them to get businesses and kind yeah. of was like apologetic as opposed to being like, hey, that didn't happen the way you thought it did. But that's what you run into with American, with especially with with American thought and the, like the way our, uh, just the way we work is if you were to give uh, blacks and Native Americans rights to own dispensaries, 
immediately to be like, well, then it's not a free market, is it? Yeah. Well, then what do you do? I never did anything. I never owned slaves. I never yeah. took land. Yeah. Why can't I have that? I need a business. And he's like, it's, it's the selfishness of American behavior that right. stops us from doing this. Right. We're just like, oh, fucking, I need that. What about me? And it's like, right. yeah, well, it's the collective we. If right. we fucking help out the collective we, you'll probably be a little bit better. Yeah, I agree, dude. But people, that's some cuck shit. It's, yeah, not on this podcast. Edit that part out, what yeah, Dan just fuck said. Yeah, that fucking thought, Fuck, dude. yeah. All I'm saying I'm is- I'm doing shows at Sturgis this yeah. Saturday and Sunday. Eat red meat, take the land that you want, Yeah, and, and, and fuck her till she's got a second puss, right, bro? Yeah, that's it, guy. Make them come. All right, baby, where can, where can the people catch you? Got any live dates coming Woo! up? Woo! City of Brotherly Love. I'm going to be in Illadelf, uh October 22nd through the 24th. I'll be in Minneapolis at Acme the first week of November. And then I'll be at the Tempe Improv in November. So Nice. And then December. We You're going very yet. Native American from Minneapolis to uh, Arizona. Yeah, I'm going from the Great Lakes. I'm going to visit all the tribes. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be their white savior. We should do a reservation tour. Yo, good luck, bud. Where it's like we just think we think we're being welcome. We're like we're gonna bring one of your own, and we show up with Namesh Patel. Yeah, and we're he's like, like, "It's me, you, and Namesh Patel." Like, he's Indian. Wang Jong I don't believe he's from this land. And you're like, no, like, he is. No, he is. It's he's Indian. So it's yeah. cool. So yeah. we're cool. <laughs> yeah. I heard. You know, rumor is we can get a Z's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. I'm just gonna put this out there. Yeah. Uh, bargains, bargains with bears. Yeah. I'm gonna <laughs> coming out. We fucking get Lou Diamond Phillips to write some jokes. Woo! Could you imagine he came out? Dude, I would love to go full young guns. On oh my a, God. We should do that sketch. Yeah. Dude. Um, all right. So that's where Dan, and where's, what's the website? Danceoder.com and listen to the bonfire Monday through Thursday, 6 PM. Crackle, crackle. With Jay, crackle, crackle. And then for Christy D, you could see me, uh, Christy I got all my dates. Big one, October 23rd. Go to, uh, go to my site, christycomedy.com. It's a streaming show. Wherever you are in any state, country, wherever you are, October 23rd, it's at 8 p.m. You can buy the tickets right now, though, but from October 23rd at 8 p.m. to October 24th at 8 p.m., 24-hour window, you can just, it's one ticket. You just buy it for 25 bucks, invite your whole family over. It's on the TV, live comedy, right into your living room. Go get it. And then November 5th to the 7th, House of Comedy in Phoenix. And November 19th to the 21st, right now, penciled in, Punchline Philadelphia. Woo. Punchline, where, right where uh, Thunder Dan's going to be. Uh, but they, it's not confirmed, confirmed yet, so keep checking back. But October 23rd, the big one, go get that live streaming show. You'd spend hundreds of dollars at a night out in comedy, and you might die of COVID. This way, $25, bring your own beer to your living room, bring your family over, one ticket, everybody can watch, uh, uh, christycomedy.com. And, of course, patreon.com slash Boys for all our fun shit. Um, we're auctioning off a tier. Uh, it's silly. Giannis isn't doing any gigs because his baby's coming. Baby So that's Giannis. the big ba baby Gianna moments away. We're going to get in there, and I'm going to try to get into the hospital and go on IG Live in from the birthing canal. All right, yeah, get yeah. in there. Does he have a name picked out? Gianna. Oh, great. G yeah, of course, after Giannis. Come on. Well, because it's Giannis is spelled with a G, right, technically? Is that what it is? V is Greek. She's our Greek yeah. speaker. Yeah, you need to check with her. We're like, check, the, check with the judges. It goes yeah. through. Um. Do you want you want you want me to read the names with Dan? Let's do it, dude. All right, all right. So what we do is obviously I'll here we go. So I'll read like I'll read like fifty of them. Okay. So Thunder Dan, what we do is people go to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. When they sign up for the matriarch at the at the ten dollar level, we read your name out. We encourage to encourage you to make a funny name to read a funny name if you don't want to make a funny name or a crazy name you don't have to but we encourage it because the winner the funniest name or the best name we give the ppw the pseudo penis of the week because hyenas have pseudo penises that they give birth out of and they have like an 80 percent death rate during childbirth it's fucking wild Fuck. pretty much their dick pussies just explode uh, when they give birth so this, uh, so this is what we're gonna do so i'll uh, read the names out and then we'll pick up We'll let Dan pick who's the winner. So I'll read 50. Is that All right, good? Go. Be? Okay. First off, we have suck my stump, fuck my rump, vote for Trump. Welcome to the matriarchy. Then we got Gianni Franceschi, nice sauce monkey. Blake Stone, sounds like Dan's friends from Aurora. Yeah. What's up, Blake? Can't wait to shred some pow pow with you. <laughs> then we got show me your passport, babe. It's not going to get hard unless you show me your passport, babe. Uh, then we got Howard Fink, who's probably not a fan of the Germans. Then we got um, Mac. Then we got uh, f uh, Fumia Mariana, uh, Fumariana Rivera. So great, said, great. Fumes. 
Love it. Love bringing the fumes to Mariano Rivera. Then we got Bum Raider from England. P.S. I designed Yanni's Blow the Light artwork through Schultz Yas. Okay, just a shout out. Then we got Make No Mistake. I'd love to come see you in another way. Um, then we got Joey Zazzo. Then we got Italian Fumi Michelle Obama is a transgender. It's what it is. Sue me Trump 2020. Okay, we don't advocate that, but... But go market. hard in the paint. Yeah. Then we got make no mistake, the fumes coming off these toots or brutes, your Tucson cuzzy. Oh, there you go. Hey, Tucson. T Town. We got a too strong. Then we got half a fruit, totally cute, not a toot. Um, here's a good one. And straight to the oven, Frank. Okay. All right. Um, I feel like we've read these already though. We have? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> then we got Aunt Tifa's Raging Clit. Okay, that's a good um, one. Um yeah, I feel like we read I feel like we we read these. Uh, yeah, let me, let me do, um, yeah, let me, let me read, uh, I'm trying to think. Here we go. I'll start from here. I'll start with these last 10. Look new. Make no mistake. I cancel my membership and rejoin with a new name. Alexander Griswold, Joey Marinara stains, Patricio Ortiz, biological father of Venetti as future kids, but make no mistake. I'm open to co-parent with Chris cause he's a piece. Okay. You love that one. Okay. That one might be the winner. That might be it. Then we got Austin, AKA Venetti is a character piece piece. Then we got Chrissy D is in effect the fish smell from your puss puss because goddamn I could smell it from here and the fumes are fucking killing it. Okay. And Rafa. So I think the winner is going to be Patricio Ortiz, biological father of Venetia's future kids, but make no mistake, I'm open to co-parent with Chris because he's a piece. Yes. Is that good with you? Absolutely. That's, That's good a with you. phenomenal. That's good with we're going to get the Patreon name squared away. It's just because we were off. We didn't do it for a couple of weeks. So now, and a lot of you guys joined. So thank you so much for your support. Uh, you know, it just got mumbled up, but we're going to fucking figure it out. Historyanus.com. You got a lot of new merch. And uh, yeah, baby, GiannisPapasComedy.com. And even though there's no do, new dates, just go check the go check the site, go check the just merch, go, go watch check the, the videos. Vids. Just go fucking hang with Yanni, baby. Just go see him. All right, Mama Luke, I'll see you later, honey bunny. Thanks, Thanks for, having for coming me. in, guy. All right, that was a great episode with the great Dan Soder. Um, we didn't want to read any Patreon names for Thunder Dan. We feel like when you know when you enter the matriarchy, it has to be done by the two queens themselves, me and Yanni P. So here we go. Newest members of the matriarchy went to patreon.com slash Bay Ridge boys. Let's start it off. Blue collar kid named Quentin that farted like Chrissy D. And now they call me Queefton. Good one. Then we got Wani in the ice bucket. Uh, then we got Spencer Crooks, a.k.a. Steel Pipe Spency, a.k.a. my dad drank when I was young because I have fumes. Okay. I'm, I'm, then we got we Gabriel Ramirez. Then we got Lieutenant Smash. Then we got Ployd. Alex, David Barrett, Brandon Beaver. Then we got, make no mistake, if baby Gianna comes out looking like her Bompas, we may have to change her name to Chaz Bono, Tim Dillon, 2020. <laughs> or Babas. Baba. It's a Greek kid. He's a Greek kid. Then we got Irish with fumes, but at least I'm not a Jew. Okay? Don't okay. condone that. Okie dokie. Okie dokie. Then we got Carlos <laughs> Hernandez, Kevin Strauss. Then we got the only viruses I get are American or venereal. Um... Then we got Chrissy Yamaguchi in the streets, Scaramucci in the sheets, unlace my skates and fuck my feet to Stefano. Yeah, he goes on the list. Uh, well done. Well done. Then we go, Kamala Harris is as African-American as I am straight. <laughs> <laughs> on to the list. On to the list. list. Then we got Edward Botello. Then we got Furchado. Uh, Carlos Snoozer. Then we got, I'm 25 and recently broke up with, can I have pistachio ice cream with nuts? Um, then we got George Trifonis, Jose Guerra, Chrissy Cream Pies, Hold the Oatmeal. Um, then we got glued up my muzzy cousin's cousin. Now she's my baby's mama. Uh, Chrissy Bitch Hips. Then we got Kane Evans, Cal H. Then we got Josh, I'm an uncut Jew fumade. Cut off my foreskin and eat it like calamari. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> list uh, are you kidding me is that yeah. a fucking rhetorical question jesus because cut off his foreskin and eat it like calamari i mean are you kidding me yeah then we got honey mustard man yeah uh reno solana then we got make no mistake since watching the cousins i'm starting to question my sexuality we're sorry uh, about that yeah then we got andre barbosa then we got keenan it slices the garlic uh, oh, so Keenan, it slices the garlic. Oh, it slices the garlic thin or it gets the hose again. Yeah, I mean, Keenan is definitely yummy. Then we got, I ran out of flagrant two and Tim Dillon content. It's just what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Drexler, Drexler, hilarious. 
Then we got Justin Yassin, Alfredo. Then we got Silly Billy with an OK Willie. Uh, Don Lamoni. I uh, do that. Yeah. Uh, then we got Vinny, my band teacher, tickles me, McGinnis. Throw him on the throw, throw him on a fucking Drexler just for bringing up a band teacher. Then we got the road from altar boy to proud boy goes through Father Bill. Um, that is uh, got, that that's inventive. We got to get a Lisa Drexler for the for that. Then we got Maggie, a waspy southerner, trying to mind her Q's and P's, but can't help loving those K E T B R B's. I love it, love it, girl, love it. Then we got Matthew Schinkel. Then we got, of course, a home run way Sean King. Um, Wait, that, we got, he won already, right? He won. Maybe he upgraded his pledge. He's back in. I don't know. Yeah. Then we got Brian Lash. Then we got Raul Beyond the Wall White Walker with the Leroy Loaf Campos. <laughs> yeah, Drex. Then we got Cucky Cheese. Um, yeah, it's funny. Then we got Kim Flickner, King Cuck, James. Then we got Jimmy went for a swim. He hit the egg and then did a shimmy right onto Yanni's non-skinny titties, Begerich. Yeah, throw him into a Drex. Andrew Aguilar. Then we got uh, Shwakanda Forever King. Then we got Mike Spud Monkey Mick. Make no mistake, I got freckles on my dick, O'Hanlon. Yeah, on the list. Then we got Ray Reyes. Then we got Tucked Back Jack looking to get cracked by a black who can even lick the sack if you want a little snack. <laughs> Throw him on a list. Wow. The kids got, got Dirk- bars. Kids got bars. Bars. Then we got Dirk Weeda. Then we got Crazy Nancy moves the vegetables to get to the opioids. <laughs> Uh, list. Then we got April Borwish. Uh, then we got uh, Father Joe Bilden. Maybe that's just an actual priest who joined the Patreon. Hello, could, Father. Yeah, could um, just be a kid. Then we got um, I'm so able. I'll just crack it open and clean it out. Okay. Then we got Venetia, so fond of the non mean she did not learn how to read Way Sean King. Keep it moving. Uh, then we got Devin Edgington. Kyle Hunt, Callum Caldwell, Dave, Emil Wando Bjorn. Then we got Nick with the cute dick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's a definition of a chicken figure onto the list. Then we got Aiden McKenzie, uh, Alicia. Then we got Anon Ashkevigal, <laughs> Kyle Wilson, Leo Mendoza. Then we got, unfortunately, a Ridgewood queen that loves to peen. Throw him on the list. There or you girl, go. Throw her on the list. Yeah. Um, those are the list. I want to give you guys who got on the list. I want to give you a shout out for being funny, but this is one of those lists that was just, that was hammered. It was taken and there's nothing nobody could do about it. It's like when Joe Pesci gets whacked and that's that it's over and there's no, it's, there's nothing we can do about it. So give it to him. And that's that. So the winner is Josh. I'm an uncut Jew from cut off my foreskin and eat it like Calamade. <laughs> Without a doubt, stone cold winner. And that's that. And that's that. Yeah. There you go. So that's the Patreon names. Thank you so much. Patreon.com slash Bay Ridge Boys. Uh, ChristyComedy.com. I'm doing a live stream show all over the world. Go to WallStreetTheater.live or ChristyComedy.com. October 23rd, 8 p.m. Pay-per-view stand-up event. Go get the tickets right now. October 23rd, 8 p.m. It's available for 24 hours wherever you live in the world. November 5th to the 7th. Uh, House of Comedy in Phoenix. ChristyComedy.com. HistoryHainers.com. And then uh, 2021, it's going to be the year of the Yanni baby daddy. Yeah, and guys, remember, turn on your notifications on YouTube. Go review us on iTunes. Most importantly, please share us in your stories. Retweet. Tell friends. Be proactive. Spread the word. We'll see you soon.